Okay, would you like me to stop? Okay. Well, I've just been told that uh, I'm on air, so hello, everybody. Um, my name is Jeremy Gilly. I'm the founder of Peace One Day here in Mexico City, and uh, just want to start by saying a big thank you to Universia, uh, to Google, and to YouTube uh, for making today possible, for making it possible for me to talk to all of you. Um, that's a great honor, and I, you know, I want to thank everybody for that, so thanks a lot. Ready to start? Okay, so um, as I said, my name's Jeremy Gilly. I'm a founder of Peace One Day, I'm a filmmaker. And in 1998, I was very concerned about what was going on in the world. Uh, the destruction, the starvation, uh, the killing of innocent people, it was confusing me and frightened me. And I felt that I wanted to try and make a difference in some way. But what could I do, you know, as an individual? Um, and the only skills that I've got are those of a filmmaker. I was bottom of the class. I was told I was dyslexic. Um, I don't have any qualifications. Actually I, actually, I do. I have a D in pottery, um, although obviously that didn't get me very far. But um, so, you know, an ordinary person like myself wanting to make a difference, obviously sometimes that feels like we can't. But actually, I decided at that point to use my film camera to see if through the, the making of a film, we could make something happen. And because I was thinking about peace, I decided to try and make a film about peace. And then as I was thinking, I realized that a film just about peace was a very big subject. And where was the starting point? What was the journey I was going to go on? And that led me to a thought of thinking, well, there's no day of peace. There's no starting point for peace. And that fascinated me and interested me. And that was when I suddenly had my idea. Could I make a film about trying to create the first ever day of peace, the first ever ceasefire non-violence day in the world voted by every head of state? What I'd like to do now is show you some of the images uh, from my films, which will give you an idea, a little bit of a, an insight into what happened, how it happened, and the kind of people that have been supporting me. And then I'm going to make a presentation that I just made at TED.com. Uh, TED and in fact, if you go to TED.com, you can see that speech that I made. But uh, before, we, before I make a, a, a little presentation, I'm going to show you a film right now that will give you a bit of an idea of how it all happened. Thanks a lot. My name's Jeremy Gilley. I'm an independent documentary filmmaker. As I was growing up, all around me were scenes of aggression, war and hate. I couldn't understand why we just can't get along. The more violence I saw, the more frustrated I felt about not being able to do anything about it. But I wanted to try. In July 1998, I decided to make a film about peace. Then I realized there was no day of peace. That was it. I was gonna try and establish the first ever annual peace day. A day of global ceasefire and non-violence. A day for everyone to become involved in the peace process. If I failed, the film could make a profound statement about a world unwilling to change. If I succeeded, well, that was almost inconceivable. I traveled the world to build and document a case for the day's existence. The day could be the beginning of a deeper process. It has the practical uh, impact of allowing access of humanitarian aid, access of information, uh, freedom of movement, uh, relief from the pressure and tension of not knowing where the next bomb or bullet may come from. That to me is um, uh, an idea whose time has come. Through time, I think it will become more and more effective. What do you think? To come to 100%. You need a lot of time. Yes. But I think the great thing is at least we've done something for the next generation. Yes. If there is a cessation for a day, then it gives us an opportunity to move supplies safely through places that are otherwise difficult. This is my suggestion. When you go around the world and 
like find a group of people who like who do what you do uh, in their country yeah. and go to another country and do the same thing so it yeah. make your thing more powerful. Yeah. How old are you? 16. So you're about to leave school soon? Yeah. What are you doing for? <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Any moment, whether it's a day or a week, that we can give the combatants to pause, to think, and reflect on what they are doing to their own people and to the environment will be a great achievement, and I would support it 100%. The United Kingdom and Costa Rican governments have now joined together. I think the important thing is to keep talking about it and keep trying, you know. I'll stay with you. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But I think it's very, very important, and I'm really, really proud. The need for such an enhanced approach was originally brought to our attention by a UK-based non-governmental organization, Peace One Day. This is a step forward in international relations. Be observed as a global ceasefire day. Let's stand up on September 21st. Let's say that we want peace, and let's begin. To make peace a reality throughout the world, 365 days a year. Thank you, Mr. President. May I take it that the Assembly decides to adopt the resolution? It is so decided. <laughs> Bro, you know those things that you have in court that you whack? They whack one of them. Peace Day has been adopted by every member state of the United Nations. An annual day, separate from politics and religion. A day when every human being on Earth can become involved in the peace process. And that's what's important. Every human being. Because if you can find it in yourself to do something for Peace Day, September 21st, no matter how big or small, then together we can create a day of global unity. And that unity will save lives. We've been working for years with United Nations agencies and humanitarian organizations to document life-saving activity on the day, and it's been a huge success. Now with these peace days, we have an opportunity building more every year on every year. It's not a pipe dream, it's a reality. 1.4 million children vaccinated in Afghanistan during the peace days last year, and this year we hope is going to be 1.8 million. What happened was historical, was magnificent. The Taliban came out with a statement saying they're not going to harm any vaccination teams. If it can happen once, it can happen again and again and again. All over Afghanistan, there have been 82 separate Peace Day initiatives. So you see, the day is working. So the challenge now is to let the people know that Peace Day exists. We decided that creating an education resource had to become one of our main priorities. After a year and a half of work, the Peace One Day Citizenship Resource Pack was completed and last year was given free to 92% of UK secondary schools. This year, with the support of Ben and Jerry's and Scholastic, it will be given free to the schools of America. It's our intention to give the Peace One Day education resource to every school on the planet. I said to them what you've done, and that we would very much welcome a special resource for the schools in Afghanistan. And our work with young people is growing in fantastic ways all the time. One day, one day, I'm ready to play. We teamed up with Puma and created the One Day, One Goal football campaign to see matches played all over the world on Peace Day. From the conflict zone in the Ivory Coast to an indoor shopping centre in Tokyo to the match I played this afternoon at White Hot Lane, I'm delighted to announce that there have been football matches played in honour of Peace Day in 180 countries around the world. Instead of kicking ass, let's kick the ball on September 21st. Will you play?
Over 100 million people in over 100 countries are marking the day today in many different ways. But we're still at the beginning, and now we need your help. Please make your commitment to the day, because each and every one of our commitments makes a difference. By making your own commitment to Peace Day and logging it on our website, you will inspire others to do the same. As commitments grow, so the message will spread until everyone becomes aware of the day. The idea of having a Peace Day where we can allow barriers to come down, allow people to get in with much needed aid and medical supplies, is a fantastic idea that I support wholeheartedly. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if anything is achievable until you actually try it. We will not stop until we've informed every human being on the planet that Peace Day exists. It's up to our generation to build the foundation for a united world. And it will grow. It will really grow if you get behind it. So please, mark Peace Day, 21st of September, and lives will be saved. It's our better responsibility. We are them. We have the responsibility uh, to, to show the right path for us to be supported. What will you do to make peace on the 21st of September? Okay. Well, great. Thank you very much. I, you know, I hope you enjoyed uh, enjoyed that film. Are we okay for sound? We're back on. Yeah. Brilliant. I, I love this technology. It's just incredible. You know, you know, like YouTube, Google, University. Yeah, putting this together, it just you know, it kind of blows my mind. I remember being on a plane, you know, not so long ago, uh, with a man. You know, talking. He was a historian of kind of war, and I said to him, you know, why do you have hope? He was, seemed like such a hopeful guy, and he knew so much about war. And he said, I have hope because of technology, and I never forgot that. And he's absolutely right. The fact that I can be here now talking to universities across Mexico is an incredible thing. And in fact, you know, we're supported. Uh, by Skype also, and uh, they've been doing some extraordinary work with us, taking us into you know, schools a, a, of the world. And so this kind of technology is really bringing us together. It's really uniting us, and, and I'm you know, obviously very excited about that. So let me talk now about a little bit. You saw that film. I was you know, deeply concerned about what was going on in the world. You know, I didn't understand the destruction, the starvation, you know, the killing of innocent people. I'm sure you will feel the same about that. You know, there is conflict all over the world, in every country of the world. You know, I arrived here last last night leaving London and for the last few days we've had terrible riots you know in, in, in my city and you know it's shocking and disturbing and um, you know making sense of those things is obviously very difficult I've also traveled as you saw you know to Somalia Burundi Gaza the West Bank India Sri Lanka Central America Afghanistan Democratic Republic of Congo and I spent a lot of time speaking to those who are suffering particularly women you know and, and children so I am kind of uh, was deeply moved by what I saw uh, and that's really kind of inspired me and empowered me to kind of utilize my life, my skills, you know, to make a small difference in some way. And I think the wonderful thing about everything that we're going to talk about right now is that we indi as individuals can change the world. We can make a difference. Our actions count. And by uniting and coming together as one, we can change things. We don't have to get involved in politics and religion. Those things exist. But we can just say, okay, the 21st of September is a day of peace, voted by every head of state in the world, every member state of the United Nations. It's a day of ceasefire and non-violence, i.e. the violence in my home, in my community, and in my school. It's as much about that violence as it is about violence between countries. And we as individuals can mark that day. And, and, we can that, and, that, and marking that day creates hope, and hope creates change, and that's what we want to see happen 
all over the world. And I'm delighted, having come to Mexico before, the men and women and the students and the bloggers and the NGOs and the corporations that I've met. There's so much courage and passion for peace that I, you know, again, want to say to you, thanks for giving up your time to allow me to speak to you, to tell you about the 21st of September and the global truce of 2012 that we're going to be going for. So let's look at some other slides. You know, I launched this journey in 1999. You saw it in the film. You know, I invited all the press. The press didn't come. You know, they weren't interested in what we were trying to do. You know, and instead of let that kind of get me down, uh, you know, I found that interesting that I'm not a celebrity, I'm not a famous person. We were trying to create this day of peace, but that you know, media wasn't that interested. And that becomes relevant later on. Of course, as you saw, I started to work with Angelina Jolie and Jude Law and others. And obviously, that was a very um, you know, strategic move, one that was very successful. But in the beginning, it, it began with nothing. I, was, I did all of this from my mum's back, uh, back room. She lent me a room in her house. We had no money. You know, we were playing guitars, we were singing songs, you know, putting on little events to try and get money together to send the letters out to all of those incredible people, saying to them, you know, we're going to try and create this day of peace, will you help? And obviously, I'm pleased to say, you know, as you can see from this slide, you know, that and, and as you saw from the film, you know, incredible people like Amre Musa from the African Union, it was the, uh, actually called the organization, uh, the OAU at the time, the Organization of African Union, <coughs> But he came forward, Dr. Oscar Arias from Costa Rica, who of course you know, came forward, Kofi Annan, Mary Robinson, Shimon Perez, Amre Musa, incredible men and women were saying, this is a good idea. And, 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 and I really felt like I was building a case. You know, this slide here says, you know, building the case. And what I mean by that is, as a documentary filmmaker, I was going on a journey to try and create this day. And whether I failed or succeeded in the creation of the day, it didn't matter. The fact was, I wanted to gather the evidence as to if the day was going to be created, this evidence would make sure it was created. <coughs> and that's how I kind of strategically went about it. And that was really interesting. And I was listening to the people, as I mentioned to you. I was always focused on young people, always focused on you know, women, and, and, and the people who were really innocent, who were really suffering, as well as talking to the humanitarians. And, and actually, it was in Somalia, some of these images here, um, you know, where I really became very moved, you know, particularly on this slide, as we see you know, that, you know, that young girl that I'm holding. Um, you know, obviously, I, w I was literally just holding a skeleton. Uh, the, the young boy in the bottom right-hand corner was a child soldier. He was 12 years old. He had killed people. Uh, the young girl uh, in the top right-hand corner had had about a, you know, two, two, three inches of bone removed from her leg with no anaesthetic because they didn't have any in that area. And it was really at this point where I was deeply emotionally, kind of physically really moved by the suffering and the struggle that some people go through, that I decided that I had to create this day. That making a film about creating the day and it maybe not working or working was not something I was interested in anymore. Yes, I was interested in documenting, but this issue that I'm talking to you about today is much bigger than a film. It's much more important than a film. Yes, the film documents it, but this is about people's lives. This is about children who are being bullied at school or, or, or being hurt in their communities or involved in domestic violence or in wars where they're you know, obviously involved in you know, horrific you know, incidences where you know, uh, people's lives are at stake. And, and obviously, naturally, that has taken over for me. And Peace One Day as an organization has grown. And it, and it handles a lot of these issues in a number of different ways, which I'll tell you about in a second. So anyway, after this journey of, of meeting all of these people, I'm delighted to say, obviously, as you saw, that on the 7th of September, the British and Costa Rican governments put that idea forward to the General Assembly. It was unanimously adopted. The Mexican government, every government in the world, unanimously adopted the 21st of September as a day of ceasefire and nonviolence. <coughs> And that was obviously, you know, an incredible day in my life, Na naturally. Excuse me, I must have a sip of water. <coughs> so much to tell you about. But um, <coughs> so the 7th of September was a great day. I witnessed the world being, uh, you know, voting. Uh, sorry, I witnessed the world voting for the Day of Peace. And on... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and on the morning of the... <coughs> wow. On the morning of the 11th of September... 
Kofi Annan invited me to um, come to the United Nations and he was going to announce to the world's press that the day of peace had been created. And of course, as you can see from this slide, you know, I was there at eight o'clock in the morning. I was running my film cameras, waiting for the Secretary General to come down and make that statement. Of course, he never made the statement. The world was never informed that there was a day of peace. And that was obviously you know, a, tr a tragic event. I mean, it was awful for those who lost their lives. It was also, as a consequence of that, those who continued to lose their lives. But even though, you know, we'd worked so hard to create this day, in that moment when I was, you know, witnessing what was going on, we were evacuated from the United Nations, nobody was told about the day. You know, I, I kind of felt even more inspired, empowered, empowered probably is, is, the be is a better word, because this was the very reason why this day of peace needed to work. That these kinds of things that were going on in the world is why we need a day to unite. We need a day to interculturally cooperate which the academics are saying is the key to humanity's survival. So, you know, I, I left New York uh, eventually when we were able to get out, and I went back to London, and I, and I put that film together. It was, it was called Peace One Day, and it was about how we'd created this day. But I could hear the cynics saying, yeah, it's just a day of peace. It won't make any difference. It won't save any lives. It's just a day. It's meaningless. And that was terribly shocking to me. And that was when I decided that I would continue the, to continue the work and continue documenting. Because I, I was obviously saddened that the world had created this day. I had been told it would save lives. And then the cynic was saying it was a useless day. So I decided that we would continue rolling. I went back to the United Nations, and I said to this man, who you can see on this slide, Ahmed Fauzi, look, we've got to try and make this work somehow. We've got to find an area in the world, somewhere, where we could demonstrate and prove that violence can stop, and as a consequence of that, lives can be saved. And after years of work, of talking with Ahmed and many other people, um, you, you know, I'm, I'm pleased to say that UNICEF came forward. Um, yeah, and and they, they said to me, okay, well, look, we'll try and make this work in Afghanistan, which was fascinating because Afghanistan was the one place where everyone said it will never work in Afghanistan. You could never talk to the Taliban because I knew that if we did document that, then the cynic had nothing more to say. I mean, this sense of not believing peace is possible is because we're so beaten by what we're reading in the media and seeing all the time. We're starting to believe that we can't make a difference, that peace isn't possible. And that's shocking, and we've got to change that because peace is possible, and we as individuals can make a difference. So I went back to London. I'd now got UNICEF to effectively be involved in the process, and I went and saw Jude Law. And I saw Jude Law <coughs> because I'd known him as an actor. I was an actor many years ago before I became a filmmaker. And I said to Jude, listen, will you do a statement for us uh, on camera? Um, because I can't get any press. You know, when I launched it, the press didn't come. When we created the Day of Peace, there was a, you know, 9-11 happened, so the world didn't know. You know, I needed celebrities to become involved in the process. You know, and Jude, will, will you help me? And he agreed. And he was doing some statements for a big concert that we were going to hold. And as I was with him, he said, where are you going next? And I said, I'm going to go to Afghanistan next. And I could see that there was an interest from him about coming with, him, coming with me. So I said, okay, well, why don't you come? He said, okay, I will. And we found ourselves in Afghanistan. And I thought it was really important that he came because the, the world that we live in, there is a real fascination with celebrity, with these incredible artists who obviously are amazing at their jobs. And I felt that, you know, we had a little bit of finance to go. We had a good idea. We had a lot of people wanting to support it. And now I had an incredible ambassador, which was going to get us coverage. And that coverage um, in the media is like leverage. It's the one thing that helped me open doors and, and get this taken even more seriously. So I'm very grateful to Jude. Well, obviously, when we were there, you know, we met everybody, as you can see from this slide. You know, President Karzai, young people. You know, we sat down with NATO and ISAF. You know, we met uh, men and women. We met doctors. We met elders. You know, we went out with soldiers. We held press conferences. Uh, you know, this woman here you see in the bottom in the middle slide, Fatima Galani, was the spokesperson for the Russians. You know, uh, sorry, the spokesperson for the, uh, against the Russians. Uh, an incredible woman. Uh, uh, knows everybody. W wonderful tentacles that she has in, rela in relation to reaching out to people to tell them about the ideas. She's head of the Afghan Red Crescent. Amazing, amazing woman. So that's, that's how we did it. We went to Afghanistan and we spoke to everybody. 
and everybody to tell them about this day of peace and that would they observed it. And if they observed it, perhaps you know, children could be vaccinated against polio. If we stop the fighting, then, 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 then the doctors, the immunizers, could get to the children that you can't get to and they could give them the polio vaccination. So anyway, after weeks of work, we left Afghanistan. I went back to London. We had to wait to see if it was going to work. And I'm pleased to show you this letter, which came from the Taliban when we got home after a few weeks. And, and this letter is effectively saying, OK, we will acknowledge this day. We will acknowledge this day. And as a consequence of that, so did everybody else, ISAF and NATO and the coalitions and uh, you know, uh, the Karzai and his soldiers. Everybody observed the day. And because of that, UNICEF, WHO, and other UN agencies took 10,000 vaccinators into areas of conflict that you could not normally go, and they vaccinated 1.4 mil million children, 1.6 million children, which was incredible. So, you know, it's, it's really interesting that I speak to you, university students about to leave you know, your universities, you know, run our countries, run our businesses, you know, that we, we can have ideas. They can become a reality. You know, we, we, can, we can go into Afghanistan and these, these, you know, by working together and building relationships, you know, great things are possible. And so now I want to talk to you about, you know, the next idea. And that next idea comes from this slide now. In 2008, the following year, after in 2007 it had worked in Afghanistan, the following year it worked, it worked again. And the UN stated that there was a 70% reduction in violence. A 70% reduction in violence on the day, on peace day. And that fascinated me. And I remember being stuck in New York once again, this time because of uh, the volcano had erupted. I was there, I had time to think. And I was sitting in New York and I was thinking about this 70% decrease of violence in Afghanistan. And that made me think, well, if you can have a 70% decrease in violence in Afghanistan, why can't we have a 70% decrease everywhere? Why can't we go for a global ceasefire? Why can't we create the largest reduction of violence, both domestically and internationally, you know, all over the world? And, and uh, you know, th that to me seemed like a logical step. I went and saw Jude, I went and saw the UN, I went and saw, you know, various colleagues, you know, people that I trusted to say, do you think this is a good idea? And obviously the feedback was really positive. And so now we are going to do that. And this slide here shows you what we're going to do. So on the 21st of September, this year, 2011, we're going to launch a campaign at the O2 Arena with incredible artists to uh, launch a campaign that in 365 days' time, i.e. the 21st of September 2012, we will go for a global truce. On the 21st of September 2012, the largest reduction of global violence, both domestically and internationally. And we will send messages out, um, you can see on these slides, through the dance community, through social media, through globally networking, through our education materials, that at this point are in the six official languages of the United Nations, being used in about 160 74 countries. We will orchestrate relationships with humanitarian organizations, governments, intergovernmental organizations. We'll put more concerts on. We'll forge a relationship which we have with LOCOG, the London Organizing Committee of the Olympic Games. You know, to, to, to use London 2012 as an opportunity to raise, raise awareness of this global truce. We'll organize football matches, sports activities, um, you know, which we've done historically. And all of those things we hope will inspire, you know, individuals individual action, people getting involved. So I think the most important thing that I want to say today is you've seen that we've created a day of peace. You've seen that it worked in Afghanistan. And if it can work in Afghanistan, it can work everywhere. So I'm here in Mexico to say to you, students, please get involved in this process. Please mark Peace Day this year, the 21st of September 2011, and mark the launch of a 365-day campaign to what I hope will be the largest gathering of people, the largest reduction of violence on the 21st of September 2012. You can find more information out at peaceoneday.org. You can join our Facebook community. You can join the Twitter community. You can get involved in the process. And I know that the people of Mexico, as much as the people all over the world, you know, want peace to be a reality. We have to lift the level of consciousness around the fundamental issues 
that humanity faces. And I truly believe that if the youth of this world, the students of Mexico, engage with students all over the world, and we stood in our streets, and we stood in our squares, and we came together as one, that it would be a great sign for future generations that peace is possible, that individual action can change the world. So I thank you, and I leave you with this thought. You know, we have to try. You know, by working together, we can create peace one day. Thank you, Universia. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, Google. And thank you to all of you who have listened to this. Please visit peaceoneday.org and get involved in this process. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.